The Yehudi menu in school in the south of England is also a place of privilege. Musically talented children from all over the world compete for a chance to come here to study. Much of the moral fervor behind the drive for equality comes from the widespread belief that it is not fair that some children should have a great advantage over others simply because they happen to have wealthy parents. Of course it's not fair. But is there any distinction between the inheritance of property and the inheritance of what at first sight looks very different? These youngsters have inherited wealth, not in the form of bonds or stocks, but in the form of talent. That 15-year-old is an accomplished cellist. His father is a distinguished violinist. It's no accident that most of the children at this school come from musical families. The inheritance of talents is no different from an ethical point of view from the inheritance of other forms of property, of bonds, of stocks, of houses, or of factories. Yet many people resent the one, but not the other. at the same issues from the point of view of the parent. If you want to give your child a special chance, there are different ways you can do it. You can buy him an education, an education that will give him skills enabling him to earn a higher income. Or you can buy him a business. Or you can leave him property, the income from which will enable him to live better. Is there any ethical difference between these three ways of using your property? Or again, if the state leaves you any money to spend over and above taxes. Should you be permitted to spend it on riotous living, but not permitted to leave it to your children? The ethical issues involved are subtle and complex. They are not to be resolved by resort to such simplistic formulas as fair shares for all. Indeed, if you took that seriously, it's the youngsters with less musical skill, not those with more, who should be sent to this school in order to compensate for their inherited disadvantage. This now, but the question is, those processes may indeed reduce freedom greatly. Uh, I would go beyond the question of equality and, and put it more generally, that any process to ascribe any status to any group of people, equality, inferiority, superiority, must necessarily reduce freedom, because whatever the government wishes to ascribe to any group, Whatever, whatever place, to use the phrase that was very common in the South, that blacks should have their place, whatever place the government is going to assign to people, that place will not coincide, wait, that, that place will not coincide either with, with what all those people are doing or with how others perceive all those people because there's too much diversity among human beings. To maintain any system of ascribed status from the top is going to mean reducing people's freedom across the spectrum. That's right. the point. People have an ascribed status. It isn't as if government, by its intervention, creates it. People are born into this world in a given sector of a society, and many, many of them are born at the bottom of the society. The argument for, uh, about equality of results was an argument that was linked to equality of opportunity. People recognized that unless there was a degree of equality in a degree of the enough food, enough security, access to education. Unless these things were available to all children, then equality of opportunity was merely a mockery. That's why equality of results became an issue, and it became an issue for black people in the United States, and they expressed their concern, no, whatever they the opinion You expressed polls, it, damn it, look. <laughs> The, 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 no, they did not. They, they did not. They Damn expressed it. Francis, that. It and then reply. They yes. expressed their will by their extraordinary participation in a protest movement that began in the late 1950s and didn't end now, until I the have 1960s. Never. Intellectuals were not in that protest movement. You want me to black answer or you want to keep on? In that protest. You want me to answer? I finished. Yes. Good. Black people have never supported, for example, affirmative action. 
POTUS, anything of that sort, wherever polls have been taken of black opinion on such matters of should people be paid equally or should there be this or that, black people have never taken a position that you describe. So it is not a question of what black people chose to do. It's what you, you choose to put in the mouths of black people. It's what you choose to, to project. It is not what any black people have ever said anywhere that you can put your it's finger on. It's what you on. choose to put into the mouth of the pollsters, as far as I can see. I put in the mouth of the leadership of, posters, of the black community. Like most people, I have never seen a pollster. If you look at the leadership of the black... <laughs>